Welcome to a continuation on connective tissue. We will be talking about cartilage, bone, and blood. There is no direct blood supply, so it's going to heal very slowly. Uh, mainly is rigid connective tissue, much harder than other types of connective tissues. Chondrocytes, these are the cartilage cells located in the lacunae. This is basically the fibroblast that we have a special name for, chondrocytes. Lacunae are small chambers or lagoons. You can kind of think of, if you think of Hawaii and lagoons in, in Hawaii, this connective tissue cartilage and several others are going to have to have these small lagoons or little chambers that will hold the cells so the matrix does not impose upon them. The matrix, protein fibers mixed with ground substance. There are three types, hyaline cartilage, elastic cartilage, and fibrocartilage. First we'll take a look at hyaline cartilage. It is the most abundant, contains very fine collagen fibers, so fine that um, in most of them you're not even able to see. They are mainly glassy, white, opaque, the cartilage is, but it, it will be stained and you'll be able to see it. Found in the trachea, ends of the long bones, ribs, the end of the nose, and fetal skeleton. It acts as a precursor to most bones if it's found in a fetal skeleton. Here is a microscopic slide of hyaline cartilage. You can see it here. All of this is the ground matrix. See, it's very difficult to be able to recognize the collagen fibers. And this is the lacunae with the cells actually in them. So this is the chondrocyte, which is the cartilage cell in the lacunae. Remember the location, end of long bones, soft part of the nose, and rings of the respiratory tract. Function, support, and protection. Second, we have elastic cartilage that's connective tissue. Contains mainly elastin or elastic proteins and collagenous fibers. It's firm but flexible, found in the framework of the ears. Go ahead and flick your ears there and see how much more flexible it is than some of those other areas that have cartilage. Your nose and the epiglottis. Of course, this is dyed another color. And this is a microscopic sample taken out of the epiglottis. You do not have to recognize this specific type. I just wanted you to take a look. You could actually see here that the elastic fibers of the elastic fibers. Here's the lacunae with the chondrocytes again in it. Remember, you do not have to recognize this specifically. Third type is fibrocartilage, the connective tissue. It's mainly strong collagen fibers used as a shock absorber in joints like the medial and the lateral meniscus. It is found in structures that withstand tension and pressure, the wedges in the knee joint and the intervertebral discs. Here are microscopic slides. It looks somewhat similar to the hyaline cartilage here again but you're able to see many more of the fibers. You do not have to recognize this one also. Remember that the chondrocytes are always in lacunae. So let's take a look at bone connective tissue, rigid connective tissue. Sorry. The intracellular matrix is very hard and durable. The matrix produced by the osteocytes are mineral salts and collagen, which are those protein fibers again. The fibroblasts are specifically called osteocytes, which are also found in lacunae. Osteo, osti, bone, sites, cells. 
the periosteum is the membrane surrounding the bone. This is the slide that you would need to recognize. The caniculi are what are going to connect the osteocytes to the blood supply. The blood supply is located in the central canals or the Haverson canals. And the blood will be able to travel through to get to each one of the lacunae that are located here, along here. You can see they're in concentric circles around the central canals. Haverson canals would be bonus. And remember, they are osteocytes in the lacunae. There's a fairly good diagram for you to be able to see the caniculi. It would just be nice if they showed the lacunae around that and how the blood supply, because remember, the blood supply in this, um, in this connective tissue is not going to be able to go through the matrix as in all the others because it is such hard calcified. That was just compact bone that we looked at. This is found in the middle areas of the bones, not near the joints and it is filled with yellow marrow, which is fat for energy. The other type of bone is spongy bone, also called cancellous. It is not near as densely packed as compact, and it is filled with red marrow used to form blood cells. So here is your cancellous bone, or spongy bone. And here is the compact bone, so you can recognize the difference there. Here again, spongy bone and compact bone with those concentric circles with the caniculi connecting to the blood supply in the Haverson canals. Speaking of blood supply, blood is considered a connective tissue. It's composed of cells suspended in a fluid matrix, or the plasma. Specifically, red blood cells, erythrocytes, which carry oxygen and carbon dioxide. White blood cells, or leukocytes, that protect against the disease platelets, which are cellular fragments, and they help blood clotting. Blood is so important to help maintain homeostasis for all the cells in the body, being able to carry nutrients and oxygen, and being able to carry waste and carbon dioxide. You've all heard of blood cells, uh, stem cells, and they are able to blood cell stem cells are able to differentiate into all these different kinds of blood cells. See here, there are a lot of types of white blood cells. But these would be found inside the spongy bone. Here is a slide micrograph. Blood, which is a connective tissue. The location. Duh, right, in the blood vessels. And the function, of course, it supplies cells with nutrients and oxygen, takes away their waste, and fights infection through the, the, through the white blood cells. The small broken parts are platelets, which help blood clotting. And there is our red blood, blood cells, or erythrocytes. And there is an example of a white blood cell. Sorry, I keep just a quick review and take a look at this slide and determine what the structures one, two, and three are. You can pause the video if you need to. One are the caniculi that connect all the blood cell, I'm sorry, all the bone cells or the osteocytes to the Haverson Canal or the blood supply. There are the osteocytes loco la located in the lacunae and the central canal, which carries the blood supply. You can continue on to part three, and that will be the remaining. And we will take a look at muscular tissue, 
nervous tissue and the extracellular junctions.